Today, we're going to look at an article that made me rethink how I view the impact of LLMs along different levels of software developers and IT professionals. So regarding the effectiveness of AI, the opinions, they're all over the place. Some love it, some hate it. And while we're all being told that senior developers adopting AI will rule the world in the coming years, it's largely the senior developers who are least enthusiastic about using LLMs. The popular thought, I'm not saying the, but a popular thought overall seems to be this. Junior devs, LLMs can help you learn, but they can really stunt your growth because you'll have a tendency to fall back on them almost blindly to give you all the answers when you get stuck. And you'll get stuck a lot. And this will turn into an AI prompt copy and paste cycle that you see many junior devs fall into. And then as you get more senior, LLMs begin to really show their benefits. You know the fundamentals, you can solve problems on your own, and thus can use LLMs as an assistant, a sidekick, a junior to help you speed up your work. And this is the worry that everyone has. If senior Senior developers can work five times faster with a good LLM, then there's no need anymore for junior developers. They're just not worth it. They're too slow and ineffective. This is a kind of mainstream thought process. Even this tweet here from Greg Eisenberg, who is a good thinker and I love his content, he says, one good dev with GitHub Copilot ships what entire teams did five years ago. And I thought that way as well, many of us do. You can imagine a great developer with GitHub Copilot or Cursor blasting out solid code with great efficiency and doing the work of five mid or junior devs. However, this isn't really the case. It's assuming the job of a dev is largely coding. For some it is, for others it's not. So I came across an article that sheds a bit of a different light on this based on where you're at in your level of expertise. And I think they may be onto something. Now before we dive into all of this, I need to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant, who provides a way to learn valuable, technical, industry transferable concepts in as little as just 15 minutes a day. Brilliant.org is a great way to learn math, logic, and computer science interactively. Brilliant's fun, it's practical, and it has thousands of lessons from computer science and programming, algorithms, Python, data, logic, and other tools to help you level up your skills. And it's built for busy people like me and you. Like I said, you can master big concepts in as little as 15 minutes a day. And it's a much better use of your time than mindless scrolling. Maybe you want to dive deeper into linear algebra, large language models, big data, or just learning the basics of Python, building programs on day one with their built-in drag and drop editor. Today, I moved into a new lesson in the How LLMs Work course, and specifically one on bigrams and mutability. Brilliant helps build your critical skills through problem solving, not memorizing. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you'll also, in the process, become a better thinker overall. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Travis Media or click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now back to the video. Okay, let's take a look at this article. First, check out this chart. The very first thing you'll notice is it's pretty much inverted from what I previously talked about earlier. The impact is high as a junior, but it drops as you move toward mid and through senior and then sharply spikes back up for staff plus. Well, let's break it down. And by the way, this article is by a Sergey T, shout outs to him. So there's much debate online about the usefulness of LLMs. While some people see giant leaps in productivity, others don't see what the fuss is about. Every relevant hacker news post now comes with a long thread of folks arguing back and forth. I have a theory about this divide. The theory is that on average, an LLM's impact on someone's day-to-day -day job largely depends on their level. And it follows a really interesting curve as we've seen here. So junior engineers, you're just starting your work in a new code base and you're still piecing together a solid mental model of how things actually work. Here, an LLM is a lifesaver. Stuck on an error? A LLM can give you an explanation that makes sense. Need to write some code for a minor feature or do a library upgrade? All of this can be done much faster with an LLM. This is where LLMs shine. This is where they're most efficient and accurate. From the technical of writing code to getting a summary on technical topics, this is helpful. An LLM can already feel like it can do a huge part of your job for you. That's why I believe there's a real danger zone here. Plot twist. If you lean on an LLM as a shortcut to get unstuck in the same way as you'd reach out to a more senior colleagues when you'd otherwise have to ask, then fine. So if you are getting ready to go to your senior colleagues to ask a question, try an LLM. Try to ask it a question, maybe it'll help you get unstuck. In the real world, chances are you won't have the luxury of avoiding LLMs even if you wanted to. Everybody's using them. However, if you end up copy pasting code back and forth between your IDE and the LLM without truly understanding what's happening or why, then advancing your engineering skills will become a serious challenge. So there are junior developers who are killing it with LLMs and there are junior developers who are being destroyed 
by the same LLMs. It really is that great a difference. On one side, too many new developers are too reliant on using LLMs to get them unstuck. And it's evident when ChatGPT goes down, they're brought to a halt. What to do? I don't know how to read documentation. This is the danger. You get stuck, you ask an LLM, it gives you an idea, you try it, it doesn't work, so you prompt it again, it doesn't work. And you start this angry cycle of prompting, copying, pasting. Prompting, copying, pasting. And before you know it, you're in too deep without a clue as to what is actually going on or what's actually changed in your code base. So at this level, you have to be very careful. An LLM can destroy you or it can be the best thing ever. And it all depends on how you use it. There's much benefit if you tread the waters carefully and try and fully understand everything going on. You must be in control and not get into that copy and paste loop that will destroy you and teach you nothing. In fact, it will probably become the very tool that will be responsible for weeding you out of this industry. For example, you have to generate some certificates, but you don't fully understand how certificates work. Don't ask the LLM, how do I generate a certificate? Or even worse, paste in your ticket contents. Instead, ask it to explain to me how the certificates work. So you first get an overview of how they work so that you understand what you're doing. Then you can tell it, okay, I have this task, explain it, and then what is the best way to approach it? And then don't go and copy the commands and expect it to do the work for you. Instead, with the information you've gathered, plot out your solution and execute. So you're working the ticket, but you're also learning about what you're doing. So there is a danger here and there's a great benefit. Choose wisely. But then we move forward to the mid-level engineer. So you've built up a fair amount of context and can navigate your code base with confidence. You still find that LLMs make you write code much faster. You can ship features faster with Copilot's completion, use agents to write less boilerplate code, learn new frameworks much faster with ChatGPT. So there is still a good benefit here and probably better as you have a greater skill set than when you were a junior. You understand what it outputs and can use it effectively. And this is a level I think many of us are at. But as you move further into mid, it drops. Why? Well, it says, however, you're already bumping into cases that an LLM simply can't handle yet. It won't decipher what the customers actually wanted from the ticket you were given. It can't use your debugger to pinpoint a dangerous race condition, and it can't help you much when you're responding to a midnight on-call alert. So there's real human demands that start to take precedence as your skill set and value grows that LLMs can't help with. As your tasks get harder, the LLM gets less and less relevant. Instead of being a sidekick that speeds up your technical workflow, it becomes a tool that no longer has the capabilities to address the problems you're actually having to address, the current real life context that you find yourself in. It can have context into your code base, but not necessarily into your head and train of thought. And that leads us into the senior engineer, where it's the lowest according to this chart. So here it says, you've got a great mental model of the whole code base you're responsible for. You know all of its ins and outs. You probably wrote a decent part of it. Sure, you can code much faster and you enjoy it, but how much time do you really spend writing code? And this is the real question. And you start to see the issue here. Again, instead of becoming the sidekick that's doing the junior level tasks for you, your tasks aren't junior level at all or mid-level at all. The LLMs are passing all these benchmarks and doing all this math and calculations, but your day-to-day -day duties have moved past the technical writing of the code and you're doing all the other very important non-coding roles of a great developer. As a senior, you're writing code less, you're designing environments or architecting, you're in meetings, relaying information to customers, and again, the tasks you are performing are not at all really enhanced by LLMs. And this is why you find many senior level devs not impressed with LLMs. This is where you find the LLM curmudgeons. They just aren't aren't that big of a help to them. They say stuff like, it actually slows me down, I can do all the work much faster myself, or I keep having to correct it because it hallucinates too much. Things like that. They're less concerned about it while the junior developers, the cage stagers, can't stop talking about it. When you work on the roadmap, it really can't help you much. When you dive into a weird Heisen bug, it really can't help you. It gets confused. When you're writing an extensive design document for the next project, it can only help you with the formatting and structure, not the hardest part, the substance. It just doesn't have all the nuance and context you've accumulated in your head. And even if you wanted to, you couldn't write it down. Many of your friends and colleagues are excited and you want to be excited, but you just can't. The AI is simply not there yet. This is probably the level where the most skepticism about LLMs comes from. What do you think? Do you agree with that? Disagree with that? 
Let me know below down in the comments. But then look at this. In the last stage of this chart and beyond, we see a steep increase in usefulness. And this says staff plus I would include managers, tech leads, CTOs. And I would also include people like indie hackers who are pushing out apps and bragging about how they don't even have to know how to code. They also seem to be the most optimistic and first to try all the new things and talk about how everything has changed and all the old things are dead. And then we think that applies to our everyday jobs and all of that. I could get sidetracked on that for some time, but let's continue reading. Staff plus engineer. While there are many staff archetypes out there, one thing is common between them all. Your role is often to light the path for others to follow. And to achieve this, you have to experiment a lot. Here's where LLMs can start shining again. Writing proof of concept projects has suddenly become much easier. If you need to show the feasibility of taking an approach, an LLM can help create a half-baked, barely working solution much faster than without it. And the best part is that once the LLM gets stuck, you can very quickly get it unstuck using the extensive domain knowledge in your brain. And here's an example. Almost two years ago, I was exploring a migration plan from one RPC framework to a few alternative solutions to resolve substantial issues with the former in a large mono repo. Of course, to explore, you could create a smaller repo and experiment there to learn the differences, etc. Or with the help of an LLM, you could actually make a fully working proof of concept change in the real repo. An actual solution that you can touch and play with speaks volumes more than any polished document. And since then, what LLMs can do has only been increasing, enabling staff plus engineers to run even more experiments and back their bold ideas with working prototypes. So what's his conclusion? And then I have a few words I want to say. So I hope this article brings some clarity to why the experiences of some folks are the complete opposite of others. That's the big thing. Some people love it, some people hate it. Some people say it's the most helpful thing in the world, it's just mind blowing. And then other people are like, AI is so stupid. It does nothing for me. More importantly, I hope that understanding this curve can help everyone be more empathetic towards others. The reason some people are skeptical or overly excited is not that they ignore reality, but that the tasks they work on are quite different from yours. We're not all doing the same thing here. So what's happening is LLMs are getting better at writing code, passing benchmarks, playing chess, passing bar exams, helping us cheat, things like that. But from there, we get this gap until we get to the visionaries, the experimenters, the proof of concept people, the no code guys who are the biggest AI proponents. And by the way, there are a lot of people who are like, I don't even know how to code, but using something like Bolt, I was able to launch my app and it only took 10 minutes. The end of coding is here. We don't need coders anymore. Sure, your app is buggy and you can't take it any further. When bugs arise or you need to add new features, you'll have to hire a team of people who do know how to code. You can't just keep prompting and copying and pasting and having no clue what any of it means. Proof of concepts, prototypes, yes. Mature apps, no. And that's just your own little app. It's a small fish in a big ocean of small to mid to big corporations with legacy code, secure environments, big safety teams. And until LLMs can be trusted and relied upon start to finish, we need competent people to run things in this field. I'm not bashing AI, but don't let the indie hacker who knows nothing of code tell you he is easily building apps that work well. Another thing to note, when we see a company like Meta stating it will get rid of all its mid-level engineers because AI, please know that number one, they are big tech. And number two, it's an experiment that may prove correct, but it may fail miserably. We have to wait and see. These big tech companies have the resources to take these risks, to innovate, to tread waters that medium to small tech companies can't afford to tread or have no interest in treading. So when you see the headlines, don't then think this means all tech companies in the world are doing the same things. So overall, I thought this assessment had some merit. What do you think? How do you think LLMs differ by skill set? I'd love to hear your thoughts about it below in the comments. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.